Hi folks, welcome back to the Cannabis Corner. I'm your host, Kerry Burns. When the Marijuana Tax Act was passed in 1937, subsequently, there was a, a great amount of environmental damage that was occurring that uh, most people never thought about. When you think about all the hemp and fields that were growing prior to that time, and the amount of greenhouse gas that these plants were taking care of, in other words, the CO2 they were absorbing from the air, then you can see that the amount of CO2 levels certainly would have risen during that time after the Marijuana Tax Act was passed. Now, there are many reasons that are so unconstitutional as why cannabis is illegal in this country and the fact that the person's individual choice is threatened by the law and the Controlled Substance Act, which came later. But many, one of the things that people never think about with this war on drugs and all is how much environmental damage is being done. And it all began back there in 1937. Once the hemp and fields were not allowed to continue after the 1937 period, then we, we saw rises in carbon dioxide in the country. It's understandable because there is no plant on the face of the earth that grows as fast as the cannabis plant, and none absorbs carbon dioxide like the cannabis plant does. There are there many other environmental factors going on, though. If you look at the, uh, what the hemp and fields did to crop rotations and stuff on the farms and all, these, these types of plants, when they drop that amount of leaf litter, they're going to do a tremendous amount to improving the soil and the humus value in the soil. Once that stopped, those layers were no longer added, and this, this is an environmental threat. This messes up habitat, messes up soil ecology, messes up soils bacteria. But one of the major events that occurred, and this was recorded by the Ornithological Society of America, one year after the Marijuana Tax Act was passed, the songbirds of America did not sing. And this includes your canaries, the red birds, cardinals, blue jays, all the different types of songbirds, because hemp was responsible for about 70% of their diet. These, these large hemp fields that we used to have growing in the country provided ample amount of seed during the time that the plants were blooming and producing seed and this was a tremendous part of the diet of many of the songbirds in America and once the law was changed these hemp and fields were gone the songbirds diet was affected and it affected the the song output by the birds and all. Of course environmental damage is nothing new by the the uh, the country the government <clears throat> when you look at the uh, when they find a marijuana field right now today if usually they're out isolated out in the woods or something. They use tremendous heavy equipment and all to bulldoze a path back in there to get to them. They destroy countless trees, shrubbery, low-lying low vegetation, and a lot of these trees are nesting birds, baby birds, uh, infant birds, some eggs that even haven't even hatched and all. Yet their main focus is to plow this path, just ruthlessly plow through these different woods and stuff and get back to these spots where the cannabis is growing. Even when they do an aerial uh, find with the helicopters and all and try to come in there from the air with the helicopters, they still do tremendous amount of damage. Not just the destru destruction of the marijuana plants themselves, which are hurting nobody, and they're helping the environment by growing there, but just the amount of pollution that's coming off the helicopter and the pollution coming off of the agents that are out there chopping the plants down. This is just a small fraction of environmental damage that goes on, but this, is, but this is a tremendous amount when you add the sum total up of what's going on around our country. Another way that they're doing a lot of environmental damage is down on the border when they get in these high-speed chases with these cars that they suspect are laden with, with cannabis or narcotics, as the Border Patrol likes to refer to cannabis. They don't, even, they don't even follow the protocol set by the UN Drug Control Policy, which now refers to it strictly as cannabis or cannabis resin. But along the border, and any time it's convenient for the government, they refer to it as narcotics. But when they chase vehicles off into the Rio Grande and all, the oil, the gasoline, all that spills into the river, this does, an, does a tremendous amount of environmental damage. Not just right where the vehicle goes in, where it's the heaviest of the amount of damage, but this trickles downstream and affects fish, fish habitats, all of the ecosystem along the shores, and also within the water itself. And yet, no, nobody ever considers this particular factor. I mean, there's, there's plenty of reasons as to why the cannabis should be legal, uh, not to mention that it's just a personal preference and personal choice of people, but 
we need to take a really close look at this environmental damage. And it seems to be that our government doesn't care about the amount of environmental damage that they do. Shortly after Nixon had passed the Controlled Substance Act in the early 1970s and all, he, he came across to try to stop the flow of cannabis basically coming across the Mexican border. And one of the first things they did was to go down into the country of Mexico and to spray Paraquat, which is a very dangerous quaternary ammonium herbicide. Now this herbicide was spraying from planes just like they do crop spraying, which is ridiculous in itself, but when you're spraying a dangerous substance like Paraquat, this was sprayed on the farmers, sprayed on the innocent people's lives down there. People that weren't even growing cannabis had Paraquat sprayed on them just so they made sure that they got all of it that was growing or as much as they could and all. And the environmental impact of this is, has never been studied. It's never been followed up on. And I can tell you it's, it's tremendous, not to mention the health hazards that was wreaked upon these poor farmers down there when the United States government decided to do that. The environmental damage continued when the cannabis that did get sprayed was allowed to be harvested and sent to the United States to be smoked by the people here in the United States that were choosing to use cannabis, their constitutional right, by the way. So the government itself never shows any problems about doing destruction, particularly environmental destruction, by chasing after the cannabis plant. That's really it's really quite uh, crazy, to put it mildly, but here we have, say, a marijuana field of 500 plants growing. The amount of CO2 that this is absorbing is, is 10 times greater than any plant around there and growing in pro close proximity to it. So why, why would it make sense to go in there and destroy a plant that is environmentally beneficial, and yet we do tremendous amounts of destruction to get to them? And then... The, the amount of damage that the vehicles that they take in there, the, the fuel that's spilled, a lot of them go in there with flamethrowers and they burn uh, crops up. Just, I mean, they spray them with toxic substances, toxic herbicides, even stronger than Paraquat, Agent Orange equivalents. Why, are, why aren't we as a country outraged by this type of behavior? It, it, it just goes to show you that the government doesn't even care about our own environment. They are so hell-bent on stopping cannabis and the flow of cannabis and all that environmental damage is just one of the side effects. It's like when we go to a foreign country to drop bombs and we kill innocent people. Oh, well, that's just one of the side effects of the war. Well, this is a major side effect of the war on drugs is environmental damage that's going on. And people should be outraged. I mean, this, this has far-reaching effects. It, it didn't just affect the songbirds and their diet and all. But when you look in, look in the environment and all, and you look at the predator-prey relationships and all, and the amount of birds that were, their populations were thwarted because there wasn't enough food for them to eat until they, they started changing different diets and stuff. But when you're depending 60 to 70% of your diet's dependent on the hemp seed, and that's taken away from you, that's not just something you can just turn around and flick a switch and, and replace. And when your populations of birds dwindle, then you're, you have, it has a major effect on all sides of the spectrum, above and below than the predatory level for the birds. Not only the birds that are being taken for food by higher mammals and, and, and different animals, man included, but also the lower animals that, uh, that the birds used to feed on and all to keep those species and populations in check. So it's, it, it's a tremendous, tremendous amount of spread once the localized event occurs. Just like when, the, when they go in there to spray in Mexico. Sure, they thought that they were, oh, that'd be simple. We'll just go in there and we'll just taint the entire countryside with Paraquat and whatever that lands on is going to kill all the vegetation. Hopefully there'll be some cannabis growing in there and we can justify having to do this because, you know, people shouldn't be you growing cannabis in Mexico because it's bound for the United States. I mean, this is just how absurd it is. And, and the fact that cannabis is a safe herb and we, we allow the government to just freely pollute the countryside, pollute the border, pollute the rivers, all that, just because they have this hell-bent attitude to try to control cannabis, it's really unbelievable in my mind. And I think that the environmental damage is one of the chief things that we need to take a look at. And if people really were conscious about you know, being green and about worried about the environment and toxicity and the far-reaching effects of 
toxic substances like paraquat and the different things that occur when the drug enforcement agency and a lot of their allies the border patrol and homeland security and all them are looking for cannabis plants or people hauling cannabis and all uh, i think that the effects of the that it does on the environment are far more dangerous than anything the cannabis itself could do so we really not to mention the cost and of course we're preventing the hemp industry from occurring which would be a solution to some of the excessive CO2 that is produced in our atmosphere. If it is being produced by man, this would be one way to limit it because nothing absorbs carbon dioxide faster than a cannabis plant that's growing in the ground. So reach out, people. Talk to your congressmen. Talk to the people around you. Ex express to them not only is it wrong that we arrest people for cannabis and all because it is their personal choice, but maybe expose them to this environmental side. Let let them see that, you know, this isn't just some little minute infraction of some type of event occurring. This is a major environmental damage that's going on, and we need to put a stop to it. And I thank you for joining the Cannabis Corner.